Okay, so in this video, um, we're gonna have some fun decoupaging a nesting doll because I know that the nesting dolls that you can buy online uh, to use in creative counseling, they don't feel very unique and they're not, they don't really represent many metaphors and, or symbols in counseling. And so for me, I really find it hard to connect with a nesting doll that has a specific face or a specific design um, that just doesn't feel like it's got any of my history in it, any of my story or any of my future. So I'm just creating, having some fun creating my own dolls. Um, we'll just see how that ends up. So I've covered this already in an acrylic paint by Arteza, just plain white. I love the Arteza brand, you can get them online. Um, and they give her like a really thick, nice base color as well. You've got loads of stunning colors in there too. I haven't painted the inside, I'm gonna do that much later on, and I'll do it in a different color. But for now, I'm just going to try and add these different strips to this. And I'm not gonna have a sort of pattern in mind, I'm just gonna see where we end up with that. So I've started to cut some strips out. I'm just gonna keep going with that. Just get a few shapes here. And the paper that I'm using um, is this brand Decapatch, which I absolutely love. Um, you can see them online, uh, decapatch.com, and you can also find them at Hobbycraft on Amazon and various, and they've got so many different beautiful colors. So it's definitely a brand that I'd recommend you looking into. I'm also using um, a specific glue, a glossy glue for decoupage, which is really important. It comes from the same brand actually. Um, and they just work really well together. I've played with lots of different glues and this is definitely absolutely my favorite one today. So we need to make sure we've got a nice dry brush and I've just been painting. So I'm gonna just dry this brush out nicely for the glue. And then what we're gonna do is just give the whole, I could put this into a cup, but I'm just going to stick a light bar. I want to give the whole of this area that I'm going to be working on a nice thick base and we'll go over it again anyway in a minute. Okay, I'm, just, I'm actually going to put some in there for now. Hold it together as well. Okay, and also it's a great way to start where did I put that in from. So I'm not going to overly think how I want to do this because when we actually paint the glue down, it will stick down exactly how we leave it anyway. So you don't have to worry about creases and things like that because that just naturally comes out. The paper's so nice and thin that it just easily comes out with that. So don't worry about how it's going in there. And also, I don't want it to go over that edge there where it closes down. I'm just gonna give it a little wobble like that. Again, the glue is just gonna stick down really nice and neatly anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. See these creases I was talking about? Once you glue it down, they'll just kind of stick down nicely in there. So let's just keep going with that. We'll see how these end up. And the cool thing about counseling resources is um, clients will see what they see in them. So, Having things that are perfect, sometimes it's not always the best kind of approach. And that's what I love about creating your own resources. You don't need to overthink it or think that it needs to be perfect in any way, which is cool. Right, so we've got a little start on there. Go for the next layer down here. And the reason I didn't want to set all the stripes perfectly is again, I just don't want that kind of perfected look on these. I want them to be all a little bit confused which is just perfect a little bit messy a little bit confused okay get more of them down I love working with these papers because there's so many different ways that you can work with them and they're actually really easy to use you just got to keep going over and over with the glue keep going going, going. you don't even have to pre-paint if you don't want to you can just literally Pop it straight onto the natural wood because these dolls were just originally natural wood. So really easy to work with. I'm just going to keep doing that. Looks a bit messy, but when it dries, it'll go nice and flat. I'm going to try and get all those air bubbles out of the paper. That'll make a difference. And at the end, we'll also give it a good varnish that the paper stays, even though the glue comes out nice and glossy anyway. I'm going to do the bottom so we get same kind of color in there anyway and the same nice gloss. There you go. Okay, so it's a good start. Go 
take that bit down there as well. So I just want to now look to see if there's any bits that are like sticking up in particular. And just mush them all down. And the cool thing is you can get quite rough with this paper. It's a really good quality paper. So you can really squish that. I can feel like an air bubble there. You can really squish those air bubbles out, which is nice. There you go. And just keep going with that until you feel like you have definitely covered all areas. Is that a bubble? Nope. Perfect. Okay. Hey, sounds like part of it done. So do I want to add anything else to this? I might add a little bit of mica powder. So mica powder is quite nice. It gives it a really cool kind of um, sheen. Or oh, actually, do I want that color or a different one? Let's have a quick look at what colors I got here. Let's have a quick look for a different color. Because I'm feeling like maybe something that's quite similar to the white, just, just with a bit of an extra sheen to it. Maybe even a bit of a silver. So we're gonna have a look at some silver mica powder. This is a new one. And then that'll just add a little bit of extra color to everything. So we're just gonna give it another little coat over. So I can add this powder and see what it looks like. Again, we're just getting messy and having some fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my little spoon to just add. What's cool about this stuff is that when it dries, it'll dry really um, quite shiny, which is quite nice. I'm gonna keep chucking that in there. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a little sheen. You probably can't see in that light. It's really hard to see, but it's getting a really pretty little sheen on it, which is quite nice. I'm going to keep going with that. Get a little bit more sparkle in there. And actually, if you had a, um, a varnish or anything that you're going to add afterwards, like a protective coat, you can get a really sparkly protective coat too, if that's something that you want to do. It's gluing to my fingers. <laughs> okay. I'm going to mesh that in there a little bit, get a bit more sparkle. That colour all over there. I do like that it's not specifically... Um, Staying in any one spot, which is nice actually on that. So we will see how that all dries up in the end. Something a little bit rustic and different. Perfect. So I'm going to put that over there to dry. And then the top of this, which I'm really getting nice splodges on, what I wanted to do with the top of it is actually just go a little mica mad on this. So the colour I was thinking of for the top is something in line so if we've got a dark beautiful like a dark gray maybe a dark gray so coming from africa when i think of africa i think of all these rusty colors too as well when i think of animals so i'm going to have a go at playing with these two rusty colors to just see what i get and i'm going to use some of the decorage glue because it's nice super sticky so i'm just going to put loads of it on there and then we can have a play with adding the mica and creating something a little bit different, possibly. Let's have some fun. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I want to get a nice big brush for this now. Uh, let's go for this one here because I want to be quite purposeful with the powder on this one. I don't want to be gentle with the powder because quite a big space. Nice and purposeful. All the way around. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same again with this gray here different colors in there and what I like about actually creating these separate parts is I'm hoping that clients will even be able to pick and choose the heads or the bases of the dolls that they want to work with 
so that they can pick whatever literally is coming up for them. That's the hope in this. And now we're going to have a go at just dragging this through to see what effect we get. Beautiful. So look at those colours, they're so nice and vibrant. That's a beautiful thing with mica powder, it gives you like a really stunning shimmer. And all these gorgeous colours too. Yeah, that actually reminds me of a lot of rustic dolls I used to see back home, which is really gorgeous. All those memories back. That was really beautiful. Ooh, colours up there too, nice. Try and pull some of that down through the bottom. I'm actually feeling like I want to have some of this pulling right through that bottom base too. Although it's quite nice to have them separated. But that is beautiful. So I am actually going to pull some of that through the base because I just really like the way that's looking right now. Oh, that's shiny my hand is in there. <laughs> it's fab. All right. Let's get some of this into the base. So it's so fun because you can just keep adding and layering and building up different unique looking dolls. And why not? A bit of fun, a bit of difference. A bit of something different. It's kind of like mixed media dolls if you want to look at it like that, which is quite cool. Oh my gosh, if we were in counselling, I would absolutely be drawn to this doll. With those hidden, beautiful animal patterns in there. Which are just kind of revealing underneath through that. And those gorgeous golds. That's looking like a really rustic, lovely pattern, those two. So let's have a go at just... Well, firstly, let's just pack this away. Let's have a go at just popping these two together. See, that's already almost dry, which is lovely. And seeing the overall effect of the doll. Such a simple idea. I'm going to now varnish that and just cover that and put that outside to dry. But such a simple and easy to create idea and something that you can use in so many different ways with your clients. So to varnish this, I'm just going to add both of my pieces to a separate plate. And then I'm using a Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Varnish. Again, you can get lots of beautiful different ones and different designs. There are stunning designs that are really sparkly and different too. So it's a great brand, easy to use. And I'm just gonna literally give it, I wanna separate them actually a little bit to do this. Just a sheen all over so that I get a nice finish, nice and protected too. But I also don't want to do too much, so I'll start to create big drips. And there we go. So we'll let those dry for a little while and then we'll see what the finished product looks like. So now that's been outside in the sunshine for about half an hour, it's totally dry. And we've got this really beautiful natural looking, rustic, animal inspired or African inspired. A little bit of my history there. Gorgeous nesting doll to work with. So there's so many ways that you can do this. You can use this with decoupage, you can just paint, mica powder we've used and again I've used the Arteza brand mica powder. I just love their brand. Um, they're really great to use. Ah, uh, you can use anything that you can stick on there, any type of paints, watercolours, anything that you like to just play around to see what kind of effect you might get on a nesting doll that means something for you or maybe even means something for your client.